In this video, we're going to go over glycogen metabolism. Glycogen is a glucose polymer that can be readily broken down to release glucose for ATP production. Glycogen is actually highly effective for storing large quantities of glucose without affecting cellular osmolarity. If you look at a hepatocyte, if glucose were not stored as glycogen, the glucose concentration would be about 0.4 molar, which is huge for a cell. But when the glucose is stored as glycogen, its concentration is only about 0.01 micromolar. So that's very effective. Glycogen has a branch structure, and you can see that structure in this diagram. The purpose of this branch structure is to have many ends to allow for rapid mobilization of glycogen. You have many ends where free glucose molecules can be broken off to quickly produce glucose when the body needs it. Here in this diagram, you can see the different linkages that holds the glucose monomers together. There are alpha-1,4 linkages for the straight chains of glycogen, and there are alpha-1,6 linkages for the branch points in glycogen. Finally, you should also know that glycogen is primarily stored in the liver and skeletal muscle in the body. Let's now look at glycogenolysis, which is the process of breaking glycogen down into glucose monomers. In this diagram, you can see the first enzyme involved, which is glycogen phosphorylase. Glycogen phosphorylase as a phosphorylase enzyme will use an inorganic phosphate to break the alpha-1,4 linkages to form glucose-1 phosphate. So glycogen phosphorylase will basically work on a straight chain and just remove glucose after glucose after glucose. However, once glycogen phosphorylase reaches a point where it is four residues from a branch point, it won't remove any more glucose residues. From there, a separate and debranching enzyme will take over. And in this diagram, you can see how it works. Again, glycogen phosphorylase will remove glucose monomers from straight chains breaking alpha-1,4 linkages. When you have four residues at a branch left, the branching enzyme will come in. It will transfer three of those glucose residues onto a nearby branch and then it will cleave the alpha-1,6 linkage to produce a free glucose molecule. From there, in glycogen phosphorylase, it produces a lot of glucose-1 phosphate molecules. The glucose-1 phosphate is converted to glucose-6 phosphate by the enzyme phosphoglucomutase. This glucose-6 phosphate molecule can then have its phosphate group removed by glucose-6 phosphatase to produce glucose molecules that can then be released into the blood. You should note that skeletal muscle cells do not express glucose-6 phosphatase, and that's because skeletal muscle cells are storing glycogen for their own use. So when they break down the glycogen, the glucose-6 phosphate is going to feed directly into glycolysis so that the muscle cells can produce ATP for themselves. It's different from the liver, whose primary source of glycogen is for storing large reservoirs of glucose to be released in the body as needed.